Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, broadcasting from a remote location in the hills of West Virginia with a class on Chapter 26 talking about other worlds. Yeah, that's right guys, the Bible confirms that there are aliens in the universe and we're going to hear about them here in Chapter 26. You got four sections. The first one is Universal Light of Christ. The second one is the spiritual link between the other worlds. How we're connected. The third one is to learn how the other worlds or learn to know other worlds and ways of life. Meaning how can we communicate with them and and such. And we're going to learn about the purposes of the stars. Billions and billions of stars. Why are they up there? We're going to find out in the third testament of the Bible guys. That's right. This is the third testament of the Bible. Stay tuned. Before I get started, tell a little bit of my background as far as other worlds. You know, some of you know that you know I, I did get a little modest degree in in uh, science or whatever. So I have studied the the um, the astronomy and what's out there, and I have wondered why there was so many worlds. But the Bible never talks about aliens or never gives us any hint that there are any living creatures out there other than this planet so there's been times when I've been in denial or said that there weren't any aliens the aliens didn't exist and that we were the only people on the other on on this planet because the Bible never mentioned it it never said that there were any aliens out there like people say if it ain't in the Bible that ain't true but then sometimes I'd have to put my engineering hat back on and start to think for a minute wait a minute the only reason why there's life on this planet is because we are what's called a class M planet. We have a certain temperature that allows water to exist on our planet and with water comes life. And I'm thinking, you know, each one of these stars is like a sun and they all have orbiting rocks around it. What are the chances that there is another class M planet in the universe? Hmm, there must be people out there, right? Well... Well, so I'm, I'm in, in my life, I've gone back and forth. I didn't know if there was or if there wasn't. But now that the Third Testament of the Bible is out, and we have chapter 26 that talks about it, we have proof. So let's get on with it. First section is the universal light of Christ. He says, verse 1 says, In that era I told you, I am the light of the world. For I spoke as a man, and because men did not know anything beyond their small world. Now, in the spirit, I tell you, I am the universal light, that which illuminates the life of all worlds, heavens and dwellings, that illuminates and gives light to all beings and creatures. So this backs up what I was saying. The scripture never tells you that there are uh, beings on other worlds. It never tells us that there are anything out there. It, it kind of leaves it to us to believe that we're the only um, intelligent beings in the universe. But what is he saying there is that now he comes and lets us know that this is not the case. He is the father of the universe and he has other creatures that are out there and he's illuminating them all the same way he's doing us here on the planet, on, our, on planet Earth. Let's go on to verse 2. He says, I am the eternal sower. Even before coming to Earth and being called Jesus by man, I was the sower, already known by those who were beyond the material. The confusion or ignorance, those who inhabit spiritual regions and dwellings that you do not yet know and cannot imagine. Talking about the people who dwell on these other planets. And we're going to find out a little bit about them. They, you know, I say the word people and they may not necessarily be people all the time or what we consider people. But there are spiritual beings out there that we're going to learn about in this chapter. And, but let's look what he says here. He's talking about individuals that are beyond the material. Now, the, this third testament of the Bible uses some sophisticated language. And you kind of, a lot of times, you, you kind of have to read it with a dictionary sometimes just to, to get the full meaning of what's being said here. But when he talks about beyond the material, to me, that sounds like he's talking about people who exist in the spiritual world. I don't know if he's talking about people who once dwelled on the earth and now they're dead and gone to the spiritual world. Or he's talking about individuals that dwelled in on other uh, uh, other planets or you know other worlds or whatever. But he is talking about, what do you say, dwellings that you do not yet know and cannot imagine. 
Yeah, so we, we don't know anything about what's beyond the, the, this world, it, whether it's other planets or, you know, in the spiritual world. We, we can't even really imagine what's, what's really there. I mean, we can try, but, you know, chances are we're not going to get it right. But let's go on. Look at verse 3. From among those who knew me before I came to earth, I, was, I sent you many to give testimony in the world about me. To announce the coming of Christ, the love of the word of the Father. Some of them were prophets, other were forerunners, and still others apostles. So, let's, let's look at this. He's talking about uh, prophets here. You know, Jeremiah, Isaiah, um, Ezekiel, all of those guys who um, prophesied about the coming of the Father. Well, he's saying that these are people who knew him before he came to the earth. They had some, some recognition of the Most High. And he sent these people down here to tell us of the, the coming of Christ, to announce that he was coming. And you can see how that's necessary because if, you know, people weren't waiting for him, what would have happened when he showed up? You know, he would have may have gone unrecognized and then humanity would kind of be a little bit lost. But we did have these prophets to kind of, you know, describe what it, what the scenario would be when he got here, what would happen so that they would recognize him, so that we would recognize him. So there would be no doubt that the Messiah had come here on earth when he finally did arrive. And then he was and look at some of the some of the words he's using here. He says some of these were prophets. Prophets, others were forerunners and others apostles verse 4 says this is not the only world that has known my passage not the only world wherever a redeemer has been necessary there there I have been present now we're talking about the Messiah and why he came here he's saying that it was necessary because of what was going on in the world if you know anything about what they were doing with those crosses back there in Rome and, and you know somebody asked the other day um, why was you know why was the Messiah up there with these two thieves or whatever if he was such a great guy why why was he up there with you know these common criminals or whatever it's because that's the way they was doing it a lot of people died on those crosses in that way and that's one of the things that the Messiah came to do is to prevent so much death he did a lot of other stuff too but you know that's one of the things that that he did and and so it was it was needed he was needed um we had to have him to come down here to do those things that he did for us at that necessary time well he's saying that each world that ex that exists and we're gonna find out that he's got people on every one of these planets out here it, but i shouldn't say people he has spiritual beings on every one of these planets out here and whenever something is going on to where they need a Messiah, they need somebody to come in and help them, he sends them. Let me see. Does he say he sends Christ? Let me see what he said. No, he says he sends a Redeemer. So it may not be, they may not call him Christ, or they may not call him Jesus, or Yahshua, or Hamashiach. He may go by a different name, but he is a Redeemer, right? And he's, he's present on each world. It's necessary. Look at verse 5. He says, yet I must tell you. That while in other worlds my cross and cup were taken from me by the regeneration and love of your brothers, here in this world, even after many centuries, you still have me crowned with thorns and tormented on the cross of your imperfections, drinking always from the cup of gall and vinegar. I'm talking about us here on this planet. He's saying that on other planets, you know, they, 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 they've learned to love him. They don't act as bad as we do here on this earth. Now, I'm not saying that the, the, the human beings on the earth are the worst in all of the universe. I, would, I wouldn't, wouldn't and couldn't believe that. This planet is kind of too beautiful for that. And I could imagine he has on worse planets where, you know, are covered in like sulfuric acid or temperatures of, you know, hundreds of thousands of degrees, you know, or, or hundreds of degrees during a day and hundreds of degrees below zero at night. Um, hostile environments there may be individuals there who aren't so nice that's just me imagining stuff you know imagine the way it is but he's saying here even here on this planet we we still aren't there yet we're still in a stage of rebellion we what does he say here um you still have me cross uh, crowned with thorns and tormented on the cross of your imperfections and you have to understand what he means by that on a spiritual nature you know if you go to to jerusalem there you're not going to see you know you know 
the Messiah on the cross. But, you know, in our hearts, that's the way we have him. We still have him up on a cross. That's the way humanity ha is on this earth. We, we're, we're still forcing him to drink of the, of the cup of gall and vinegar. And the way we're doing that is through our rebellion, our disobedience. We're not, we're not there yet. Right. Remember, he came to show us the way. Well, because we haven't yet found the way where he's still, you know, he's still kind of showing us. Let's go to verse six. And my work of love contains redemption for all humanity. I'll wait you with in infinite patience. I'll wait you with infinite patience. I have conceded not one, but many opportunities to each being for his elevation and waited through many eras. The awakening of all who sleep in profound lethargy. Okay, so even though we may still have him on the cross, his love is for all of us. The disobedient, um, as well as the ones who are obedient. And, and what does he say? He awaits, he, he awaits, um, I'll, I'll wait you with infinite patience. So he's given us, and then he goes on to say that he's given us chance after chance in order to, to, um, um, come to an understanding of who he is and to allow him to be our redeemer to kind of get in in um in obedience to his commands his laws and such and stop forcing him to drink this cup of gall it's, you know that we're doing talking about humanity you know and some individuals here may get offended like hey i ain't doing this well you know he is talking about humanity as a whole here and we kind of fit in with those guys we may be a little bit more obedient but even even the ones that are trying really hard aren't haven't yet reached a level of perfection to 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 brag about so we have to consider ourselves with that group let's look at seven he says on the ladder of perfection there are many steps in the spiritual veil and in the limitless space, there are many worlds. And truly, I tell you, I have always communicated with all of them. And my manifestation among them has always been according to the world they were in and their place on the spiritual ladder. Okay? That is some deep stuff, guys. And, you know, it's, it's, it's still a little bit hard to imagine, you know, you know these other places. You don't know. I mean, I, I guess... You could turn on Star Wars or Star Trek and, you know, help your imagination out, you know, as far as imagining what it's like for, you know, creatures that live on other worlds. Yet you still won't see any type of, you know, spiritual beings. So, well, I guess there was one um, Star Trek episode where they were talk about, talking about symbiotic units or symbiotic beings that were, you know, that kind of thing. But... It's still kind of tough, but let's look right here. Verse seven. He's talking about how the ladder of perfection has many steps. Now, um, given us opportunities to to um, to to become better beings, and and this is kind of pointing back to what we heard about Jacob's ladder and how. Um, Jacob was looking at this ladder and had these beings going up and down this ladder and, you know, and which represented us on our um, um, pathway or our evolution to the most high. There are many steps that many things we have to go through. And we find out in the Third Testament that we are given many lifetimes in order to do so. You know, we're, we learn different stuff in one lifetime that we didn't carry on to the next lifetime where we didn't expect it to learn other stuff. Well, that's kind of what he's talking about. He's talking about this ladder of perfection has many steps. He says in he says in a spiritual veil and in a limited space, there are many worlds. Right. So now the spiritual veil, that's where ghosts live, for lack of a better word. That's where dead people live. There are even our so-called guardian angels that's supposed to be with us at all times. They, they dwell in the spirit in the spiritual veil, you know. Now, we, um, and I noticed I'm going off on a little bit of tangents here, but we learn in the Third Testament that this spiritual veil, which now seems alien to us and almost invisible to us, especially for those who aren't seeking light, they may not even have any idea that it exists at all, is about to come closer to the earth, meaning we are about to be able to see and feel some of these things that um that you know are alien to us now like spiritual beings like ghosts like you know 
Mm, we may be able to see these guardian angels are working, at least at least during the tribulation. We're promised that we'll be able to see them. But let's go on. And he's talking about in the limitless space, there are many worlds, limitless space. The universe, he's talking about the universe and how there are so many planets. Remember, when you look up there at night, you're looking at stars, you're looking at suns, you're not looking at planets. So you can imagine here, here in our solar system, we have eight or nine planets. Depends on what you consider a planet. Well, um, each one of those stars out there could have, you know, eight, nine, or even more rocks floating around them. And each one of them is considered a world. So count your stars up there and then multiply it about ten for a rough estimate of how many worlds he's actually talking about. He says, and truly I tell you, I've always communicated with them. And my manifestation among them has always been according to the world they were in and thus the place on the spiritual ladder. So this kind of implies that you move from different worlds as you uh, progress in your spiritual ladder. Um, we're kind of here on earth now. And depending on how well we do here on the earth may determine which world we will inhabit next. Where are we going to next? Are we going to Saturn? You know, which, you know, you, you guys can study the planet Saturn to get an idea of what we're talking about those rings out there are kind of um, um, there's there's something going out there if you want to study that 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 planet you kind of give an idea of some of the stuff that we're talking about but you know we may go off to another solar system the, the universe is infinite and he and he tells us that there are people on each one of these worlds so there's no telling where we could go you know but he's communicating um, he's communicating with each one of these uh, people, and I know I'm messing this up, but I, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry, so I'm going to go ahead and just run through it. Um, yeah, let's go on to verse 8. While the human creatures argue about my divinity, my existence, my and my doctrine, there are worlds where I'm loved perfectly. Talking about here on the earth. You know, people still wondering if God exists, if there if there is such a thing as a father or a creator, or did we evolve from monkeys, came from primordial slime on accident or something like that? There are very, very so-called, I'm, I'm, you know, put my fingers up with the little quote marks, so-called intelligent people who are still, you know, talking about, you know, um, still, you know, denying that the that the father exists. You know, or that we should or that his Bible is real or, you know, or that he is, you know, the creator of all things, the highest. We're still arguing about that down here on this earth. And then he's but he's talking about on other worlds. There are some worlds where he is loved perfectly, where they recognize him as the as the father and the earth will get there eventually. You know, we're we're in the second era now, making a transition to the third era. It is in the third era, the post-tribulation era, that this planet will love him perfectly. Meaning everybody on the, on the earth is going to recognize his divinity, adhere to his doctrine. You know, we're all going to know that he exists. We just haven't, haven't gotten there yet. So, we're going to make it. Look at verse 9. He says, at a moment when some worlds have reached the greatest spiritual cleanliness... Your planet morally and spiritually lives in a time of great perversity. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that this world is so perverse. Unless, of course, you're enjoying the perversity and you think that this is the way things are supposed to be. You really realize that something ain't right. That this world is kind of, um, it's just kind of just going buck wild, for lack of a better term. All right, going into the second section. The spiritual link between the worlds. Verse 10, my divine light shines throughout the universe. You will find my presence wherever you seek me. No matter where you go in the universe, he's going to be there. You know, each one of these planets, each one of these 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 galaxies or whatever, he's there. He's saturated the entire universe. He says, I am the divine father who works to bring harmony to all of his children on earth and those who dwell on other worlds. Harmony between us and the other worlds. Now, this section is called the spiritual link between the worlds. So we're going for I guess we need a link to have harmony, we need harmony to have a link. So we're going to find out about that. Let's go on to verse 12. He says spiritual harmony among all beings will reveal great knowledge. 
it will provide you with spirit to spirit communication that will cut distances bring the absent close and erase boundaries and borders talking about spiritual harmony once we get harmony between us on this planet and we'll get harmony between well hmm, i don't want to go that far and say we have to have harmony with those on other worlds because we might all not make it there we may not all develop spiritual harmony with those on other worlds but if we were able to have this spiritual harmony look what we get out of it um provide you with spirit to spirit communication which kind of uh, communication between each other, me and telepathy. And we gave a class on telepathy on our channel. Just look it up. It's one of those old, older classes that you guys may have missed um, on telepathy. You can probably put in in the fight telepathy or something like that. I can't remember exactly what chapter it's in. But we did a class on that. That's spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication with our fellow human beings. I mean, you, I can be here in West Virginia. You could be there in Alabama or Las Vegas or Maryland, and we can actually be communicated, communicating with each other. Of course, it's going to take a little bit of preparation to do so, but we do now know that it is possible. He said it will provide you with spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication that will cut the distances. Meaning, even though you may be all the way out there in Las Vegas because of this spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication, you're not that far. Bring the absent close. Now, I've go, I've listened to this book several times, and what I believe he's talking about here is dead people. You know, once we have spiritual harmony, we can communicate with those who have gone on to gone on to the spiritual veil. Talking about our parents and our loved ones who who are absent from us now. I believe that's what he's saying there, guys. And erase borders and boundaries. Talking about uh, spiritual harmony and spirit to spirit communication. All right. Um, let's look at verse 10. He, verse 13. He says, "This humanity will make great strides towards spiritualism. Its spirits can go far beyond human limits and come to the higher dwellings to communicate with their brothers and receive the light that they have to offer." Okay. So he's letting us know that we can do this. He says, "With these great." strides towards spiritualism we're going to be able to communicate with people on other worlds and, and, and our dead loved ones and those who you know, don't live close to us that's what it seems to be saying there to me it's talking about our spirits <clears throat> we learn um and you know i'm trying to promote the third testament of the bible guys go out and get this book uh, there's a pdf version and or a link to a pdf in the description as well as a link to the audio books if you like audio books or you or like me you you um um you look at the text and you hear it and you just you know can go through it a lot faster but so you know find find the links and look it up but one of the things that we'll learn is that we're more spiritual beings that we than we are human beings our human our human flesh is kind of kind of a housing place for our spirits it gives our spirits um uh, uh, mechanical force gives us the ability to do stuff like make this video or close this door or something like that but we are spiritual beings first and what we're what he's talking about here is how our spirits can go beyond the limits you know once once we get the strides towards spiritualism we have to become spiritualized individuals meaning even though we're human we put the spiritual side first like spirit to spirit communication prayer healing um meditation um uh, reading scripture obedience different stuff um beyond our put it above our materialistic stuff which is like our houses our cars our jobs our money and different stuff like that once we make these strides towards spiritualism then we'll be able to go beyond the the human limits we'll be able to communicate with those that dwell in other places and, and such that's what it's saying look at 14 they may also descend to the plains where there dwell undeveloped beings of little evolutions in order to help them overcome their poor condition and achieve their higher level which guys look that may talk about them bad worlds you may go to a bad world after you leave here in order to help you you know in order to, to strengthen you kind of like a butt whooping helps you you know what i'm saying you, you really don't like it but in the end you'll find out that it was beneficial well some of us may get to go what what was the world in that movie that's jumping out of my mind now crematoria some people may be going to crematoria <laughs> 
I can't remember what movie that came from. But <clears throat> let's go on. Verse 15. The latter the spirit ascends to its perfection is very great. On it you will find beings of infinity and gradations. You will offer them that which you possess. And they in turn will give you something of their spiritual riches. Now this latter that our spirits ascends to perfection. Yeah, we find out that it takes several lifetimes in order to get there. Several lifetimes have we been here on this planet. Reincarnation. You got to remember that the Bible was changed. They replaced the word reincarnation with uh, uh, resurrection. So we starting to believe that dead people are supposed to come up out of the grave and such. And it's got a lot of people in confusion. But when you go back and you look. And we did a class. I did a little short video on that. And how, how just. I think it was. Uh, the Emperor Justinian or somebody changed the Bible to say uh, resurrection. If we go back and think about reincarnation, then it makes sense that we come back here uh, 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 to learn different stuff as our spirit ascends to its perfection. <clears throat> but this, 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 this ascension is very great. He says, and, and along this ladder, we're going to find beings of infinite gradation and what is gradation look up a synonym for that he's talking about different stages different you know different nuances degrees shades different different levels of understanding i guess is what he's what he's saying here i don't want to say that he's trying to say it's just that i'm trying to understand it he said it i'm just trying to understand it he says and you will offer them that which you possess and they in turn will give you something of their spiritual riches Look at 16. He says, then you will discover that this is not the only world that struggles for its improvement. You know, as we go on and reach these other planets, we're going to find that, you know, OK, we, we've we've perfected Earth. We've learned how to be human. We've got over the stage of being human and or learning how to be human. We've now you know, left with our material flame has been distinguished or extinguished. Our material flame has been extinguished and we're going on to these other dwelling places out there in the universe. But when we get there, we find out that they struggle, too. They got problems too and of course us being in that place are going to have to learn to to the same things that they're learning you will learn that on all the other planets the spirit evolves that on all of them it palpitates and grows fulfilling its destiny and I wish you to prepare to make alliances with all of your brothers that you communicate with them with a holy yearning to recognize love and and help each other yeah so you know this he, he says that this ladder to perfection is great and so it's going to include other worlds you know it's a little bit confusing and so i must go off a little bit you know off script when i say this but it's like the earth is the first stop the earth is kind of like the first stop now we've been here uh we've been reincarnated a few times so we have developed a little bit since we've been here but once we once we learn to be humans then we go to the next stop we've, we learn from enoch and other place that there are seven heavens i believe that the earth is the the first heaven it could be the third it could be the third i i i don't know for absolute sure but what i do know and i'm because i'm reading it right here that these higher heavens may may be higher or, or maybe other planets in the universe somewhere all right but i'm messing this up too bad so let's go on verse 17 do this in my name through your thoughts and within the strictest obedience and when you start this exercise you will begin to interpret the, their petitions and their teachings and benefits i better go back to 16. sounds like i skipped something <clears throat> I'm going back up he says you will learn that on all the planets the spirit evolves and that on all of them it palpitates and grows fulfilling its destiny and i wish you to prepare to make alliances with all of your brothers that you communicate with them with a holy yearning to recognize love and help each other he's telling us to talk to these people on these other planets he's telling us to try to communicate with people on other planets or spiritual beings in other planets now this is strange could you imagine and i've tried it <laughs> i do everything the bible says do including trying to communicate to people on other planets they're, they're part of my my morning prayer routine is to pray for those on other planets you know 
based on what it says here. 17 says, do this in my name through your thoughts and with them the strictest obedience. And when you start this exercise, you will begin to interpret their petitions and their teachings and their benefits. And yeah, I got some more studying to do here. Because, you know, I'm not getting this. I, I've, I've, like I said, I've, I've, I'm praying for them. I'm not praying to them. I hope I didn't say that earlier. I'm not praying to people on other planets. I'm praying for people on other planets. But what it's saying here is that you should begin to interpret their petitions and their teachings and benefits. Well, I haven't gotten any of that. I, ain't, you know, I haven't heard their petitions or their teachings or their benefits. At least I don't recognize so. And it may be because, what does it say here? Um, with the strictest obedience and so that may be what I'm messing up I don't, I'm not sure even what obedience he's talking about the commandments uh, statutes precepts judges judgments ordinances is that's what he's talking about or is he talking about some type of obedience so I got a little prayer to get there um, uh, because I'm trying to do this I'm trying to figure out apparently these people can help us you know these people on other planets can help us you know and so I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so I'll reach out to them. Scriptures say I can and say do. And so I do. Let's go to verse 18. I yearn for you that harmony exists with your brothers on and beyond this planet that is currently your home. Prophetize of a friendship. Ask for help when you need it. And help those who ask for from what you possess. Yeah, these guys, these spiritual beings... On uh, and I'm sure some of them are material material beings, meaning they have bodies. Remember, like we said, all it takes is a class and a planet, and you're going to have life. So some of them will be in um you know, in 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 fleshly bodies. I don't want to say human because they don't tell them what they look like. Go back to Star Trek. Star Trek may have us thinking these people, you know, look real strange. <clears throat> but you know, they can help us. You know, so once we learn to communicate with them, once we learn the spiritual harmony that it talks about, we can we can then get help from those on other planets. You say, well, some of you are experiencing, you know, persecutions on this earth where you're not getting help from anybody. In fact, those that you thought should be helping you here on this planet are actually harming you. And so it's like, well, maybe that's the only hope we got is to start praying for somebody to help us from out there in the other universe. Well, let's try it and see what happens. All right, let's look at verse 19. He says, many times you have asked me what lies beyond this world and whether these heavenly bodies that spin through space are worlds like yours. Talking about we're praying, talking about humanity is asking questions in their prayer, spirit to spirit to communicate, spirit to spirit communication. We're asking them, what's that stuff up there? What's going on up there? You can imagine all the people on the planet looking up, wondering what's up there. Some of us are asking questions. He says, verse 20 says, my answer to your curiosity has not completely dispelled the veil of mystery because you do not yet have the degree of evolution necessary to understand nor the spirituality indispensable to harmonize with other worlds. Yeah, there's a lot said here in this verse. One thing he says, my answer to your curiosity has not completely dispelled the veil of mystery. I'm like, hey, what answer? You know, in all of the scripture, and I've read a lot of scripture, I would argue I read almost all of it, you know, including the Apocrypha, Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, Enoch, Jew, everything. And I say this, you know, not to, you know, brag on myself, it's not really anything to brag about, but I'm saying it to add credibility to what I'm about to say. And that is, he ain't answered that. He ain't told us about no people on no other planets and, and what's up there. We have no idea. And Enoch didn't even tell us about it, what was up there. And he told us, he even told us how the Illuminati's work. And he didn't mention other planets and other worlds and beings up there. The only thing we know exists is angels. Angels, you know, seraphim and, you know, that's all we know. Other than that, we think it's us. We think we're it. We're the only beings in the universe. Yeah. But then he goes on and says, oh, because you do not yet have the degree of evolution necessary to understand. I mean, we couldn't understand. We don't understand. We don't really understand where dead people go. And now you're going to try to explain us how there are people living on Saturn? Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to believe. And he says, nor the spirituality indispensable to harmonize with the other worlds. Meaning what use is it? 
So what if you know they up there, you can't do nothing about it, it's not going to help you, all it's going to do is scare you, figure out, you know, wondering, you know, are they going to come here and invade us, or are we going to try to go out there and invade them or whatever, we don't have the spiritual harmony. Uh, look at 21. You have not yet managed to know or understand the teachings that the planet you live on offers you and already you seek other worlds. Yeah, we don't know how to live here. We don't know how to be humans. We don't know how to get along with each other. Yet we want to go and find out what's on our other worlds. Guess why? So we can conquer them. So we can destroy them. We're going to send us a missile up there to that other planet and we're going to take over. Hopefully they got gold or oil or something up there that we want. That's what we do. That's what humans do. That's why we invaded all of the other different countries on the world imagine what we would do to other planets if we had access to them he says you have not been able to act as brothers among yourselves the inhabitants of a single world and you wish to discover the existence of beings in other dwellings yeah you know we we got to learn how to 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 live here first and then he's starting to reveal these other worlds he said well why is he telling us now you know, we still aren't there yet. Why is he telling us? Well, this is the third testament of the Bible, and he's given us what we need to proceed. You have to understand that that's how he's done. Uh, that's what he's done for us throughout our existence here on the planet. We, you know, at first there was Adam. And then humanity lived under this kind of self-governance kind of thing where people kind of did what was right in their own mind. We didn't really have a whole lot of rules to go by except was what was written on the heavenly tablets and passed down from um, the forefathers or whatever. But it was there after Egypt that, you know, humanity changed here on the earth. After Egypt, you know, which Egypt was the first time in ever that humans had to actually pay to eat, um, making us the only being on the planet that has to pay to eat. It kind of changed things for us. And we had to have a set of rules. And that's where Moses got the com got the commandments and the other, you know, uh, other rules that we find in Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Exodus and those kind of things. That was a book that was brought here at a time that we needed it in order to teach us how to move forward. Where the same thing happened with the Messiah. We got a new book that taught us how to move forward. And here in this third era, we've now received yet another book, the third testament of the Bible, that's going to tell us how to proceed, giving us all the information that we need going forward and this is promised to be the last book there is there going to be no more um, um, scriptural text given from the father in this manner and so it has to cover everything including communications with those on other planets let's look at verse 22 for now it should suffice for you to remember that in the second era I said to you and my father's house are many mansions and now, ratifying those words, I tell you that you are not the only inhabitants of the universe, nor your planet the only one inhabited. We are not the only planet inhabited, guys. There are aliens. Verse 22 confirms the Bible says that there are people on other planets. Aliens exist. It says it right there. But look what else it says. He says, uh, for now it should suffice for you to remember that in the second era I said to you there are many mansions. Many mansions. These mansions he's talking about are other dwelling places. You know, there's a lot of people in materialistic mind, the materialistic minded people now who think of these mansions as some big brick building that they're going to live in with all of this luxury and stuff. And they, they're serious. They think that's what's going to happen. It ain't. But going on, 23. To the generations of tomorrow it shall begin to behold open the gates that lead to other worlds and they shall have reason to marvel before their fathers yeah so look what it's saying here to the generations of tomorrow talking about the the people that's going to come after us the people that's going to be born after the tribulation where the world is becoming perfected where people um are not arguing about the divinity or the existence or the doctrine of the father that kind of everybody's kind of all around singing kumbaya or whatever re ready to embrace him everybody on the planet is ready to embrace him he's talking about then it's going to be given to them to behold the open gates that lead to other worlds and they should have reason to marvel for their father i'm sure they're going to marvel when they can communicate with aliens yeah yep but that's the generations of tomorrow let's look at verse 24 he says love and goodness from which charity and peace are derived shall be the keys that open the doors to the mystery 
and so men make a step towards universal harmony all right so love and goodness is going to be how how these people are able to communicate and 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 so i guess the opposite is true too love and goodness is what's preventing us from being able to communicate with them now remember they can help us we can help them they can help us but there is a disconnect in the communication uh, pathways because of love and goodness or the lack thereof. Let's look at 25. Today you are isolated, confined and retained because your selfishness has made you live only for the world without ambitions for freedom and the elevation of the spirit. Talking about us here. Isolated. We, we, we think we are the only people in the universe. And why? Because of our selfishness. Because your selfishness has made you live only for the world, only for worldly stuff. We're only thinking about what we can possess. That's only th we're not thinking about um, anything spiritual. So the 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 the, the other worlds are disconnected from us. It's like you know they they might as well not exist out there, even though they do. All right. Look at 26. He says, "What will become of you, vain men, diminished by your materialism?" If before ridding yourselves of your human defects, you were allowed to come to other worlds, what seed would you sow? Discord, insane ambitions, and vanity. Yeah, see, this is why he never told us, guys. This is why he never told us that there were people on other planets. What would we do with it? You know, we would sow discord, insane ambitions, and vanity. Could you imagine Donald Trump going to another planet? As our ambassador, could you imagine what would happen next? Well, let me throw this out there as an example. Our Holy Bible, what we call the canonized books, the 66 books of our Bible, Genesis to Revelations, came out in English in 1611. In 1611 was the first printed document, which was the Bible, and it was introduced into bookstores around the world, and people were finally allowed to purchase the Bible in a language that they can understand. That was 1611. When did the slaves first get to America? 1619. So it took them eight years to discover the Bible, read the Bible, get them some ships, float over there, and capture the the father's people and drag them back over here and put them in slavery the Bible told us where we were at they told us what we were doing and it told them what tricks had been used to conquer us and it took them eight years to conquer us themselves imagine if he had told us that there were other planets where people dwelt <laughs> we'd have two-headed slaves by now let's go on 27 it says in truth I tell you that to reach that knowledge to which all men aspires and that revelation that will remove from his mind the questions that torture and intrigue him, man must purify himself much and will have to pray and keep vigil. Yeah, if we want to take advantage of the spiritual veil, including those on other worlds, we're going to have to purify ourselves much. We're going to have to put away our selfishness. We're going to have to put away our disobedience. We're going to have to put away our rebellion and our rejection. And we're going to have to... Um, have to purify ourselves you know and plus it's going to take stuff like tribulations that's going to help us get purified here on the planet and but you know we're going to get there it's just going to maybe a little bit painful but we're going to get there eventually Let's look at 28 it will not be science alone that reveals my secrets it is necessary that the yearning to know be a inspired by spiritual love meaning the scientists aren't going to be the one leading this thing you know they may have the tools available to to you know witness some of the stuff telescopes and computers and such but spiritual love is what's going to be the driving force that helps us to understand these other worlds right and the third testament don't only talk about other worlds in, in the whole book this is just a chapter on other worlds so that's why we're talking about this a lot there's other things that we're going to get out of this spiritual development this purification you know <clears throat> a lot of other stuff but we're going to go on look at 29 when the life of men has reflections of spirituality, I tell you, they shall not even have to make an effort to look beyond their world. For at the same time, they will be sought out by those who inhabit the other dwelling places. Wow, guys. He says, when the life of men has reflections of spirituality, 
So they're going to be seeking us out. We're not going to have to, you know, like I was saying earlier, try to communicate and try to learn. They're going to be coming to us. The spiritual veil, the spiritual valley is about to descend on the planet, guys. That's big. That's, that's really big. It's not un really understood. But that's a big deal when you think about the spiritual valley is about to dwell, about to descend upon this world. And, you know, what we learn about that in the Third Testament. All right, y'all. We're great. Come up on the fourth and final section which is the purpose of the stars all right y'all we're getting ready to go through the last section of the bible the purpose of the, of the, the purpose of the stars and i'm gonna remind you guys go ahead and hit the subscribe button subscribe to our channel we put out scriptural uh, teachings on the third testament we also put out teachings on all scripture if you look through uh, our channel and our videos we have here of course we cover the old testament of course which is books like genesis and exodus and leviticus and deuteronomy we cover uh, the new testament which is books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, Revelations. But, and we cover, you know, the apocryphal books. It's like the Gospel of Thomas or the, the, uh, Re the um, uh, Apocalypse or, of Elijah. We cover the Dead Sea Scrolls. We cover um, Hermes. We cover everything here. We give a lot of different classes on Scripture. And you see how we do. We use the Word to, to, to bring it out. We're not really making stuff up. We're, you're using the Scripture. So if you if you love the Scripture the way we do it here in Hermes Academy, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can get future classes. And in the meantime, go back and look at our old classes. Guys, these, this is scriptural stuff. It never really gets old. Um, I notice that you guys don't really go back and look at old classes. Let me advise you to do so. Go back to our channel. Look through. Scroll through. Flip through. Find some classes. Find some titles that um, that that um, uh, suit you. And I'm trying to do better with the titles and the images and stuff. But you know, look through those, and you'll find some you, you'll find some good information on scriptural stuff. Anyway, let's get on with uh, uh, the purpose of the stars. Verse 30. It says, "In your father's house there are many dwellings." Which are the infinite steps of the ladder that lead to perfection. From them the spiritual world descends to manifest itself among you. Right? We talked about this. The spiritual world is about to descend, guys. We're going to, we're going to be able to. Some of my things I can think off the top of my head. See ghosts. Talk to angels. Communicate with animals this is kind of stuff that's about to take over this world this is why we're going through a trip to a tribulation of purification because the father doesn't want anybody here on this planet to mess this up so all of the evil people are about to be wiped off the planet leaving only those who are willing to obey and do what he say so that they can uh, live in this in this world that he has planned for us the spiritual the the, the world where both Humanity and the spiritual world exist side by side. That's what's going on here. But let's look at 31. He says, many times you have asked me, spirit to spirit, why there are, are so many stars and about the planets that shine over your world. And you have asked, Master, are those worlds empty? Yeah, we've all wondered that. We've all wondered, are there Beings up there, you know, uh, is is you know, there's a lot of planets up there. Are they all empty? Uh, like I said earlier, we de never did really get a definite answer. We never did get an answer that told us yes, no, or otherwise in any of the scriptures so far. But we're still asking, and here and and, and we were promised spirit and truth. Well. Now we're learning the truth. There are beings up there, guys. This is the third testament of the Bible. This is spirit and truth. Let's go on to verse 30, 32. He said, I tell you, the time has not come for me to tell you outright. When men have reached spirituality, then great revelations will be given to them. And they will be able to communicate with those beings beloved by my divinity. Spirit to spirit and communications of thought between all the brothers will occur meaning he's still not telling us outright 
He's going to tell us through revelations, through divine inspirations. He's going to tell us from the inside. When we're ready to know, he's going to tell us from the inside. Once we've reached spirituality, and of course, reaching spirituality means putting away our materialistic stuff, putting away our worldly stuff, and embracing spiritual stuff. Once we get there, then we're going to be able to communicate with those on other planets. Remember, like I said, they can't help us, and we need all the help we can get. This communication is going to be spirit to spirit. I mean, in silence, it's going to be like a, a prayerful kind of thing. Uh, kind of if you think of telepathy, where you're trying to communicate with your mind kind of thing. And he said his communication thoughts between the brothers of all the brothers will will occur. Not only the, not only the brothers on earth, not only the brothers who are dead and live in the spiritual veil, but also the brothers that live on the other worlds. All brothers. These are all of our brothers. And we're going to learn how to communicate with them. Look at verse 33. He says, still from today forth, know this. All the worlds are inhabited by my creatures. Nothing is empty. All are blessed gardens cared for by Mary, the divine tenderness. Yeah, every planet out there has beings on it, guys. What does he say right here? And all the worlds are inhabited by my creatures. All worlds. All worlds. And, and I can't name any other worlds. I can only name the ones, you know, they taught us in school. Well, we're talking about Mars. We're talking about Venus. We're talking about Jupiter has his creatures on it. You know, that's that's odd. Especially when you think like like one of the planets is a gas giant. You know, OK, it's just a big ball of gas. You know, what kind of billion what kind of beings live there? You know? No oxygen. But, you know, once I become spiritualized, then I will get through divine inspiration, the knowledge that I need in order to communicate with these guys. That's what we're learning here. And then he says, look, look right here. And all the worlds are inhibited by my creatures. Nothing is empty. No world is empty. All are blessed gardens cared for by Mary, the divine tenderness. Now, we, we learn in other sections who Mary is our universal mother. If Mary is our universal mother, she 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 is actually taking care of the people on other planets the same way she's taking care of us here on this planet. You know, some of us would think of her as like a mother nature kind of thing. She you have a mother nature up there on those other planets, Pluto and those other all the other worlds up there. All right, let's go on. The Holy Spirit will return to speak through your mouths and more elevated lessons yet unknown to you and to humanity. When, beloved people, when there is spirituality in you and consecration in your mission. Meaning we have to become spiritualized first. Our materialism is blocking us from being able to, to, to um, take advantage of what's all going around us. Materialism is a block, guys. It may not be, it's not the biggest block. Remember, the biggest block is arrogance. Arrogance is one thing that stops us the most. But materialism is getting in our way, too. Let's look at 35. He says, look, people, contemplate the sky. Take a good look at it. And you will see that in every star there is a promise, a world that awaits you. There are dwellings promised to the children of God, which all of you will come to inhabit. For all of you will know my realm, which was not created only for certain beings, but as a, a universal home where all the children of the Lord shall be gathered. All the children of the Lord. Now I mentioned earlier how this tribulation is going to purify the earth and all the wicked are going to be removed from the planet. Yes, but they are going to be back. They, they, they are going to make it too. Everybody's going to evolve. It's just some are going to go first. The ones who survive the tribulation will be kind of the forerunners, um, um, like a Noah kind of uh, figure who will be charged with repopulation, repopulating the earth after you know all of this, you know, tribulation events, all of this apocalyptic events have taken place. But the, even the ones that whose material flame will be extinguished during the tribulation will eventually find um, their way to these other dwelling places. They're going to be back. It's the tribulation is going to purify them. It's just that they're going to have to spend some time in the spiritual veil before they actually get to come back here to the earth. But they do they do make it eventually and I, I think that should be stressed here. It shouldn't, it, it, people shouldn't be um, allowed to believe that somebody's going to uh, uh, go to hell and stay there forever. That's not the case. Um, 
um, we will all be we will all be uh, purified eventually, and we will all make it. All right, y'all. My peace be with you means that that comes brings us to the end of the chapter. That was uh, chapter 26. Chapter 27 goes on to talk about the beyond, talking about heaven and hell and that kind of thing. And we'll do a class on that coming up in the future. But again, push the bell button so you can get a notification when we put out that class. Hit the subscribe button, guys. We're almost up to 1,000 subscribers, um, um, which is a, a big thing for our little bitty uh, modest channel here. But um, Lord willing, we'll make it there. So do your part. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're really interested in this and you have friends that are interested, go ahead and share this on your Facebook uh, page, guys. Grab it. Uh, put a link on your Facebook page. It does a lot to help out the, the, the class. I know this is not one of the better classes, but, you know, you can help us out. We'll get better in the future. All right, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and close it out there. Hermes Academy. Godspeed. Power of patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.